Thank you. Welcome to Granite State Arts Academy. I am Christine Can, the guidance counselor slash assistant head of school. Um, we know you can't be here right now to take an official tour, but this is basically what happens when parents and students come that are interested in the school. So let's go take a tour. As you can see, uh, right here is some of our artwork, obviously, because we have artwork going all throughout the year. Um, there is our lunchroom. Lunches are divided up by three different periods during the day. Our school day is uh, divided in eight periods. Um, all your English, science, social studies, math, most of your music classes are all gonna be a 45 minute period. Most of your art classes, visual arts, dance, theater classes are all gonna be 90 minutes, so a double block. So we do a blended schedule throughout the day. Um, our hours right now are eight to three, Monday through Thursday, and Fridays are um, eight to 12. In the afternoons on Fridays, our teachers use that time to meet as a group to do all our integrated arts curriculum, scheduling, and all that kind of stuff. Follow me this way. We do have fresh vending um, right now. Obviously it's not all full, but we have sandwiches, salads, that kind of thing that's updated every other day so students can use that for their lunches. And we also have microwaves in there they can bring in their own lunches. Um, right here is our sewing class. Um, we offer sewing right now. Um, the students really enjoy it. Um, we've done a lot of um, projects that we give back to the community. Um, we've done an African project where students actually um, made things to send over there. We've um, done masks. Um, in the current situation, the students have made masks to give back to the communities. Um, so we try to do a lot of involvement outside of the school for the um, desk class. Also, this is also a um, class where if students need extra help, if they have a 504 or an IEP, that they um, come in here for their um, study periods. We'll keep going. This hallway we use a lot to um, advertise all our great artwork, our fantastic artwork. Um, we have some of the things that are 3D modeled. That's from our sculpture class. And then some of the artwork here is from drawing and painting and some intro to art classes. We have a lot of art classes and they change each year. Um, you would start with your fundamentals of art and then you'd have personal voice, drawing and painting. We have ceramics, we have sculpture, we have art history, we have portfolio design. Um, every three years we do an AP art class. Um, so depending on the years, next year we're looking at possibly offering a jewelry making class and a puppetry class. So each year we try to um, change the offerings so that students can change them each year. Here's our science room. Um, and ninth graders take an integrated science, um, and that's um, space, um, physical science, all integrated together. So we do a little bit of each of those, and that fulfills the state requirement for freshman science. Um, sophomore year, they take biology, and then um, we have chemistry as a junior um, offering. So we do labs in here, and we do the actual class as well. And next, we're going to walk over to our math room. We have one and a half math teachers right now. Um, we have, we start um, algebra, then geometry, then algebra two, pre-calculus, and consumer math. Um, and also, we look at offerings each year to see what students need and want, and we change our um, classes accordingly. So this is one of our two math classrooms. As you can see, he's a little into um, New England sports. We'll walk down to our art class now and see where ceramics happens, our art history. This is a piece from our art history class. Um, they had to do a Pablo Picasso where students each had a piece that they designed and then they put them all together onto one big artwork. Here's our art room. We have a kiln that's in that room, um, fire safe, etc. cetera. Um, when you get to ceramics too, you're able to use the pottery wheels that are over there behind those two screens. 
Um, as you can see, there's lots of art in the process right now. Hopefully we'll be finished in the next month or so. Um, talking about different things, um, our students actually from their remote learning are actually having their art classes. They're having their science classes. They're having their English classes, social studies. They meet every single day with their teachers. And we sent home sewing machines for sewing classes. We sent home clay for pottery, our ceramics classes. So they are doing remote learning as they would in this class, as best as we can do it. So um, they're meeting every day with their teachers to get um, their education. Here's the other art classroom. So he does have an expanse of a lot because he has lots of students that really enjoy the art classes. Let's go on over to the dance studio. Here's our dance studio. As you can see, we um, had to build up from the ground up here, um, broke down a wall, put in this special designed floor that has actual spring in it. It's better for the um, dancer's knees and hips. Um, we have over here dressing rooms, a boys dressing room, a girls dressing room over here. Students take um, many dance classes. Um, they start with the basic dance class and then go from there. Um, fortunately, they can take a dance class, an intro to dance class, and get their fulfillment for their PE credit. So a lot of students come here, they, we have PE offered, but they decide, hey, I'm gonna try the um, fundamentals of dance, and um, they love it, or intro to dance. Um, intro to dance, then they go to intermediate dance, then they go to advanced dance. We also have dance pedagogy, world dance, and many other dance classes that we try each and every year. So um, we also have the dance um, society, a national honor society, we have student government, we have robotics club, we have a lot of different clubs that the students do here. Um, so yeah, we encourage the kids to try and take different classes here. Um, whether it is just a basic world dance class where they learn the culture of a place and then they um, then they do the dance from that place. So it's kind of like doing a, a cultural perspective on it. And as we were doing a play, let's go in the back way behind the scenes of our theater. And you're on stage right now, or we're on stage right now. This is our theater that's used for all our plays, along with our dances that we do twice a year, our, um, our music um, showcases that we do twice a year. So we um, use the space as a co congregating place where all the students meet, and we have nighttime shows. So. Um, at, each, at the end of each semester, each class has a culminating thing for dance. All the dance classes will do a dance performance for their parents. Um, and, and theater will do some performances as well as the music department will have like a night of concerts. So we use this place. Going back to theater, um, many of our students will take the uh, basic drama workshop, advanced drama workshop, script writing, um, there are many, many hosts of different theater classes. They take those during the day, and then we also have all our performances that we do two to three times a year, our plays that we do here. And you don't have to be here during the day taking the, the theater classes if you wanna do the um, plays at night, but most of the kids do do the theater classes during the day and the, um, the showcases, the uh, theater performances that we have. Um, this past fall, we did The Wedding Singer, and for any of those 80s parents that are out there, it was really hysterical. They really did such a wonderful job on that play. It was wonderful. So we let me go out. We'll show you all the plays we've done thus far, so you guys can kind of get a gander of how many plays we've done. Um, we try to keep track, and we have a wall of fame, as you would say, of all the dance, uh, all the uh, theater performances we've done over the years. All right, so 
Now we're going to go down the hall and see our English classes. Um, our Englishes are divided up. One teacher does both ninth and 10th grade English, and the other English teacher does 11th and 12th grade. So we'll go to the ninth and 10th grade room first. And this teacher does ninth and 10th grade English. Um, we have, for 10th grade, we have an honors portion for those students that excel at English. Um, he also currently is doing um, historical literature and he is doing yearbook club. So we, they have, that's um, an actual class that they do here. They put together the yearbook, everything from soup to nuts, the pictures, the, um, the, all the stuff that's in a yearbook. So um, he also does the robotics club for our school. And um, this is a new club this year and um, they did really, really well and went to states and we actually got a um, kudos. So if you check on our website, there is um, something on there about the robotics club and how they performed and how we actually got some sort of accolades for being an arts school that actually went to a robotics competition. They did really, really well. Let's hop across the hall to our 11th and 12th grade English. So we have 11th and 12th grade English. We have, um, in our 11th grade, we have an honors piece of it. Um, so if you're another, again, a student that excels at English, in 11th grade, you have an honors um, portion of it. And then in 12th grade, we have an NHTI course that is, we consider an honors to, um, class for 12th grade. So um, they will take an NHTI dual enrollment class where they can actually get credit here for their senior English, but also can get credit for college if they pass it. So um, that's something that our teacher um, works with NHTI and the curriculum and they align it that way as long as it meets the state standards and the college standards. So it is a lot of work. The kids are really enjoying it, but it's great to be able to offer a class where the students get a credit here and a credit for college. She also does sociology as well. We'll walk next door to our other halftime math teacher. And as I said previously, um, we offer algebra, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, consumer math. Um, and for math classes, we do have um, someone that stays after every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, we recommend the students just check in with their teacher to make sure that they can stay, but um, we are accessible after school as well. We'll hop across the way, and this is creative writing. Um, we are fortunate to have a teacher that is um, doing a creative writing class this year, and he will be retiring somewhat next year, but he has volunteered to do a remote creative writing class. So we're really excited about that. We've had many students this year that have um, been published in many books, um, competitions, and we've had students go to a conference each year in Vermont, and it's an invite only. They have to apply, and we've had students go to that, and it's a three to four day um, conference about writing. So we've really had some great things being produced out of our creative writing class. It's class. It's a class that students take year after year. Um, and each year, because we keep the numbers really low in our classes, that he is able to work with those students on where they want to go. So if they want to be poem writers, or they want to write novels, or they want to do short stories, he is able to work individually with those students to get them to where they want to go. So it's really a great program. So now we'll walk towards our social studies slash um, Spanish and health area. Um, oh, we, I didn't forget, I forgot music. So one of our most important classes, music. Come on into the music room. So here is our music room. Um, currently right now we have an acapella group. We have a chorus group. We have an instrumental ensemble group. We have a rock ensemble group. We have music theory. We have um, audio. So there, we have every 
year we're changing what we're doing. We've had musicianship. We've had lots of different classes over the course of the years. We're looking to revamp some of those classes for next year to offer some different maybe ear training classes or songwriting classes or that kind of thing. So each year we change things up a little bit. Um, the acapella group was a hand-selected group of eight, um, eight to ten students that were ha hand-selected out of our course to perform this acapella group. Um, and we've had them perform actually at our recent gala and um, they did an amazing job. Um, instrumental, anyone that plays an instrument joins the instrumental ensemble course. The rock ensemble were students that kind of wanted a little bit different feel. Um, so that's comprised of both singers and um, instrumentalists or piano or guitar or whatever. Um, so those students are, are performing during a period at the end of the day and they're um, broken up into individual groups and given an assignment to produce um, and then they have to perform it for their peers. That and a rock ensemble group, you will have to be in a chorus or instrumental in order to perform and do the rock ensemble group. All right, walking forth. I will show you our practice rooms that we have that we're fortunate to have that the music kids use in order to practice their instruments, practice singing, to, to perform or practice or do the audio classes. The audio classes are actually held within these rooms. The first one, set up with some audio equipment. Um, your keyboards, insulation, which has helped. <laughs> A lot. We're still not insulated in the ceiling, but we uh, we manage pretty well. Our second one has our sound booth. So if a student wants to sing and they want to record, they have the computer there and all um, what they need for recording. And I am definitely not an expert in this audio stuff. So come on to the next room. Our insulated drum. And that's really helped a lot um, so that they, and actually the science class uses it for sound. Um, we try to do cross curriculum so they're able to come down here, look at sound waves, and in here we have all, a lot of our computer stuff. We've, we've run chords into the uh, music room and we're hoping to finish running chords into the theater so that then we can record our plays in the theater or our concerts and then they can use the computers in here to blend and do all the things they need to do. All right, so next would be our Spanish, Spanish one, two and three we offer. Um, and it's a great class, the kids love taking it. Actually, they want a Spanish four, so we're gonna see how we can do that for next year. Um, with the parameters that we have with scheduling, but um, the kids really enjoy. She does a great job of integrating a lot of different learning styles into Spanish. Um, she has does lots of art um, projects. They do filming, they do um, writing, they do a lot of stuff. So the kids really enjoy the Spanish classes. She also teaches a health class um, that's um, required by the state and a PE class. Obviously, we don't have a gym here, so we have to be somewhat creative on how we do our PE class. Um, they walk down the street and, and around or run, or she does a lot of things in our cafeteria. Floor hockey, ping pong, um, various other things, yoga, stretching, that kind of thing that, re that fulfill the requirements for PE. So um, she does a really great job of getting those in, in the in the parameters of what we have here at GSAA. We have one social right. studies teacher, and he teaches freshmen, geography, Western civilization. Um, sophomore, you have a half a credit of civics and a half a credit of economics. In junior year, you have a full year of US history. You also, in the civics and economics in US history is integrated in your New Hampshire requirements as well. So um, you will get all the requirements fulfilled, you'll have one teacher for the three years that um, teach your student the um, history pieces of the required courses for um, credit to graduate. All right, so let's go back this way and I will show you my office right here. And this was where your student and you would sit to talk about classes and um, requirements and credits and all that jazz. Preparing for college, we have um, 
the beginning of your junior year slash senior year, juniors and seniors go to Southern New Hampshire University for a college fair. We have NEF come three times a year, um, the New Hampshire Higher Education, um, and they do programs for parents on how to fill out your FAFSA, how to plan for college, where to start, where to go, when you've already applied for college, financial aid, that kind of thing. So we offer those three times a year for students. One is for ninth and 10th grade, one is for 11th grade, and one is for 12th grade. Um, we also have um, students meet with me um, to talk about college and that kind of thing. I am the person that would help them um, to fill all the, that paperwork out. Um, it's far easier than it's ever been um, in years past because you have the common application. And um, so most of your um, things that you need to fill out are on there. All right, next would be Mrs. Friend's office, and she is the one that basically does a little bit of everything, technology, paperwork, um, any of that kind of stuff. She's the person that you would come to to talk to if you have any questions, concerns about computers and that kind of thing, paperwork, etc. And Mr. Polito, um, he is the head of school's office, and he's here very really for discipline. We don't really have a lot of students that have discipline issues. Um, he's here to support the students, to support the parents. Occasionally we have to have a chat about grades or etc. but usually it's a positive thing. Kids are coming to him saying, hey, can we start this club or can we do this community service project? Um, speaking of community service project, our uh, National Honor Society has done a lot in combination with our um, student council to do a lot of give back to the community. We've had um, reverse trick-or-treating to a nursing home. We've gone to a nursing home to do a craft at Christmas time and um, also read a story and sing some songs with them. We've gathered um, products for the Veterans Home in Manchester. We've had a food drive at um, Thanksgiving time. We've done an SPCA drive where we've gotten food and products that the SPCA slash Salem Animal Rescue needs. Right now we're doing a drive for um, people that are um, just getting out of prison, I guess, and they need um, clothing and shoes to go to job interviews. So we're doing a drive for that. So our students really do a great job to give in, give to multiple kids. Oh, we did the Toys for Tots drive, and actually um, we just received an award um, from the Marines that um, we had gathered remember how many toys 250 something and which is pretty amazing when we know, when we're saying we only have 125 students we had basically each kid brought in two toys for the toys for tots so that was an amazing feat for our students to rise to that so um that's kind of our school in a nutshell um i know that there's probably a lot more questions and comments but i figured this was one way where we can't bring people into our school right now, one way to give you some of the information to kind of get an idea of what kind of great things we do here. Um, we are a, a public school. We are a public chartered high school. Um, we have all the same credits and all the same requirements that a public school would need, just in a smaller atmosphere with a more concentration on those art classes that those students really want to have. We have students that come here that are really interested in wanting to go to college for dance or for art or for music or for theater. But we also have students that come here because they really have a passion for that kind of thing, but then they end up going to college for pre-med or they go to college to be a lawyer or they go to college to be hospitality management. We've had students um, that have gotten into Dartmouth and have gotten into Harvard and have gotten into um, NYU and Emerson and um, UNH and some of the community colleges and many others. So check out our website. We have a lot of information on there for you guys to see some of our performances that we've done over the years, um, some of the art integrated weeks we've done in the years, um, artists and resident weeks, some of the dance performances that have happened, and also all sorts of other information. We would love for you to come and visit us um, when we can do that. We'd also love for you to apply to the school. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything about our school, you can reach out to me or you can reach out to Mrs. Friend or even put your application in at admissions and someone will reach out to you and, um, and answer any of the questions that you have. 
Hopefully you guys are staying safe in this odd time that we're going through right now. Um, hopefully you're enjoying this time with family and taking care of yourselves. So hope to see you soon. Um